and Garnu was robbed. Just look at Tyson Fury's face at the end of the fight. His left eye was nearly closed. Got a little nick on his head. And Garnu was unmarked, pretty much. And Fury looked like he got beat up. He hadn't been in a real fight for a long time. And when he was getting caught, he had that look of someone, not so much with ring rust, but someone who's not used to getting hit and hasn't been hit for a long time. And Garnu belonged in the mix now with the heavyweight division. He's proven that he can probably, by that, that fight there, he can jump in there with Deontay Wilder, he can jump in there with AJ. I think that might just be the last time we see Tyson Fury. Welcome to another episode of The Verdict with me, Carl Frotch, and I've got my old friend with me, George Groves. Today we're discussing the fight between Tyson Fury and Francis Ngannou. So straight in with it, George, What's your verdict on the fight? And did the right man get his hand raised last night? Uh, Carl, well, I tell you what, I was guilty of not being ready when the fight started with a little pen and paper and a little score sheet set out because I f didn't think I would need to try and score this bout because I didn't think it should be close. You've got the heavyweight champion of the world, Tyson Fury, someone... I don't think he's the best uh, heavyweight in the world, but I think you do. You think he's the best heavyweight in the world. Maybe not now, but up against uh, a UFC fighter, a, a cage fighter who's never boxed before. So I just thought, wow, it's, it's Fury will pull him round. Um, they might go the distance, they might not, but there'll be no problem for for Fury at all. And then by the end of the fight, I'm scratching my head thinking, is he even going to get... Well, we know he's going to get the win. You know they're going to give it to him. But uh, was he a deserving winner? Probably not. When you not. say you know he's going to get the win and did, um, you know they're going to give it to him, why do you say that? What's your like? You must have a reason for that. Well, it's, it's, it was supposed to be an exhibition, mm. so it's not a real fight. And you've got Tyson Fury fighting Alexander Usyk in seven weeks' time. Um, for all the marbles, for, you know, road to undisputed, every single belt. So you can't have the spanner thrown in the works of him losing to an MMA fighter only weeks ahead of, you know, the, the biggest fight in boxing likely right now. So it felt once he went to the scorecards, I thought, well, you know, there's no way Fury's not going to get it. What did you think? So are you saying that the only reason that Tyson Fury got his hand raised and the only reason he got the decision is because of the upcoming fight with Usyk? I think because of the money. Well, you've pretty much just said that, haven't you? But it's just one for clarity. Well, it was... It, it's... it's um, as I, said, I wasn't sitting there with a scorecard, right? But it felt to me like he probably lost. The general consensus was that um, Ngannou had yeah. won. And it's a split decision. It's one of them ones. It's not going to go down in the ages as as a the worst robbery of time. You know, we we know what they're like, yeah. Cole. But uh, pff, I thought I thought he was he was lucky. He was lucky to to get to get the nod. He think got it by three rounds with one judge. I thought that was pretty pretty unfair. I thought Ngannou was landing the better shots. The the more eye catching shots, the heavier shots. Um, and Fury just he wasn't. It wasn't really there. Why, why do you think he struggled so much? I mean, on paper, no one thought this was going to be the case before the fight. No, nobody right? thought before the fight Nobody happened. thought Ngannou could give the best heavyweight in the world. And you did say that earlier. I think Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight in the world. Right now, I think he probably is. Um, and I expected Ngannou to go in there, have a little go for a couple of rounds, and then get conclusively outboxed behind the jab and whooped. And he didn't, did he? He, he was in the fight from the off. He scored that knockdown in round three, that shock knockdown. I think he should have gone for broke then and gone. A very big, strong man, confident. And um, to answer your question, why do I think Fury struggled? I think almost a year out of the rings too long for anybody in, in any weight division, especially heavyweight division. And, and Fury puts a lot of weight on. I know the heavyweights don't have to make weight, but you do have an optimal fight weight at heavyweight. And he needs to get below 20 stone usually. Um, and I don't know, he just... He looked a bit ring rusty. He was behind his jab. He was throwing combination punches, but he didn't look as good as he's looked in the past. But Ngannou was exceptionally very good considering that was his professional debut. And it sounds ridiculous that we're even saying that, that this is a match and it was a competitive match because it, it was very competitive. Arguably, arguably, um, Tyson Fury got the decision against all odds and against the score. I mean, was was it a robbery? I think a lot of people are saying it was a robbery. 
Cole, do you think Tyson has had competitive sparring this year? You know, at his age now, I think he's been a professional for maybe nearly 15 years. He's been professional a long time. He's been involved in big fight after big fight. He's been at the top level for a long, long time. He hasn't had a real fight on the horizon this year. And is he is he saving himself? Like, is he... Because it felt to me, like, once the fight started, he hadn't been in a real fight for a long time. And when he was getting caught, he had that look of someone, not so much with ring rust, but someone who's not used to getting hit and hasn't been hit for a long time. And Nganu, brand new, um, his debut, hasn't boxed before. He's been boxing for weeks, you know, a couple of months in the process, in a build-up for this fight. But a strong guy, so he was able to hold his stance, you know, hold his uh, hold his form. The punches weren't great. They were slow, but they were they were weighty enough because he's a strong guy. And Fury likes to punch and then hold. You can't hold with an MMA guy because that is that is their bread and butter. If you're going to punch and then fall on top and use your size and try and wrestle with a guy who's always going to beat you in that stance, if to me, felt like Definitely underprepared, underprepared, uh, maybe overlooking Nganu. Yeah, potentially. Fury maybe struggled because he'd not had the sparring, he'd not, not taken the fight seriously. And obviously when you're ill-prepared and you, you think it's going to be a walkover, because everybody, including myself, thought the fight was going to be a mismatch and a walkover. And, and I was probably basing it on a crossover fight between Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather, which might be a bad example because Floyd Mayweather is so good. Is, is, is really is really exceptional, maybe one of the greatest fighters of all time, Floyd Mayweather. So for Conor McGregor to get into the ring against him and expect to do well, we blamed it on the fact that he's a mixed martial arts fighter, an MMA fighter, and not a boxer. But actually, most boxers struggle against Mayweather. You've got Ngannou getting in the ring last night against Fury. <clears throat> We're thinking Ngannou's making his pro debut, but Fury's the best heavyweight in the world. He's WBC lineal heavyweight champion. So... He's got no chance. And actually, Ngarno was in the fight, counter-punching, looking for the jab. He landed that left hook in round three. And did he make a mockery of, of, of the current heavyweight champion? What did, what did Fury do? What did he do wrong? Fury may be ill-prepared, but he was still behind his jab. He was still throwing plenty of feints. But Ngarno was, Ngarno was very, very good. I thought Ngarno was exceptionally good for a debutant. Um, and yeah... I didn't score the fight either. I certainly watched it. I didn't score it, but you get a feel for who you think's won the fight. And with that knockdown in round three, I just think Ngarno won that fight. Um, I think the CompuBox statistics shows that Fury landed more punches in probably six or seven of the rounds, but they're counting jabs as well. And a lot of jabs, I mean, if somebody lands 10 clean jabs in one round and then the, the, the opposing fighter lands one big right hand, who wins that round? The guy who's got behind his jab or the guy that's landed the eye-catching right hand and looks like he's hurt the opponent? It's subjective. Me, myself, I like to see a big right hand land and, and some damage be done and you think, oh, he's winning the fight. He's just landed a big right hand. Some people like to see, some the purists like to see somebody behind the jab winning behind the jab. So you could argue a lot of the rounds that were close maybe could have gone to Fury. But if you're going to say this is a fight, who's winning the fight, who won the fight, just look at Tyson Fury's face at the end of the fight. His left eye was nearly closed, got a little nick on his head, and Garner was unmarked pretty much. And Fury looked like he got beat up, and he won a split decision. So I agree with you. I think he won the split decision because of the future, what's happening. You know, the Saudi money's massive. They've got a big... We've got big expectations on the 23rd of December with the unification fight between Fury and Usyk. So, unfortunately for Ngarno, he's fought the fight of his life in his pro debut against arguably the best heavyweight of the current era. And he's been robbed of a decision, which sounds ridiculous and ludicrous. But I think the general consensus is exactly what I've just said. Ngarno was robbed. But is Alexander Usyk now robbed? Because I'm wondering... Is this next fight going to happen? Is is the unification, all the belts on the line that everyone wants to see, that has to happen sooner rather than later because there's mandatories looming. If um, if it doesn't take place before Christmas, then I think Hergovic or whoever it may be is in in contention to uh, you know from cat amongst the pigeons and get 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 a belt, get the IBF stripped or whatnot. 
is Usyk there? Is he thinking, yeah, 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 you'll be fine. We'll announce this fight and we're going to fight in, is it seven weeks time? December 23rd? For me, I think that fight has got no chance of happening this year. I think Fury's demeanor after the fight, he wants a rest. He wants. He does not want to be, get back in the gym and talk about this big fight. He knows he's got away with, um, got away with it. He got off the floor to 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 get a win, save his embarrassment. I'm sure he got paid an awful lot of money for that fight last night. And does he really now, after getting paid and after getting sort of a near miss, want to go straight back into the gym and get in with Alexander Usyk, who now no doubt a lot of people are going to pick to beat Fury, um. If they if they do clash, Cole, do you think do you think that's do you think that's the last time we're going to see Tyson Fury? Potentially, I, I'm not sure if he'll ever box again. I think he might sail off into the to sunset. He's made now. all that. He would have got paid a lot got of paid money. A lot of money, but there's massive money waiting for him isn't he, on the 23rd of December against Dusik. So potentially that could be the yeah, last. Yeah, but it's, it's if he loses, if he loses, is that more hurtful to him? Then missing out on a on a mega payday. Yeah, but does he want to leave? It might, for my position, when when I beat you in the first fight, I'm going to go back to me and you because that first fight I won the fight, and a lot of people said that it was a robbery and the fight shouldn't have been stopped. It felt like a loss to me. I got treated and I felt like I'd lost in that first fight. And you probably say, yeah, well, you should have felt like you lost. <laughs> that's probably that's probably you what you're lost. thinking. Yeah. Um, no, I shouldn't have lost. Why should I lost? The, the fight carried on. I beat you up, and the ref stopped the fight. Come on, let's not. Let's not get confused. But what I'm saying is... Talking of dodgy scorecards, I, I think you was winning, weren't you, when that fight got stopped? I don't know. Yeah, I probably, in my head, I needed the rematch. I, I had to put the record straight. Um, and I think Tyson Fury will, head will hit the pillow after that Ngannou fight and he'll be thinking to himself, mm -hmm. can I retire on the back of that? I've, I've just been gifted a decision there. Ngannou got robbed. Do I, can I really finish my career there? Is that it? Is that his legacy? what's he got a win against Klitschko two wins against um, Deontay Wilder alright he's, he's beating people on the way and through and that but there's no outstanding there's no standout names on his record I know he can only beat who's in front of him but he's, he's got to fight Usyk to cement his legacy and prove that he's the best heavyweight of the current era is he going to want to retire on the back of an Ngannou robbery because that's what 99% of people on social media now are saying they're saying it was a robbery um, has, has Francis Ngannou got a future in the sport based on that performance? What do you think about that? Absolutely. I mean, we everyone knows that MMA fighters, you go into MMA and if you make it in um, the UFC, you get profile, but you don't get the money. Like the money between boxing and mixed martial arts is not comparable. That's why these guys end up in a boxing ring in an exhibition type fight for the money. And now... I think it was reported that he earned 10 million for that fight last night. Um, his value has risen. Like, it, it, there's options whether they try and do a rematch with Fury because it's controversial. Also, I would, I'd love to see him in with an Anthony Joshua or, or a Deontay Wilder or someone else. Like, these big, exciting names, big punchers. Um, no doubt it's always going to end up in Saudi, but I think he'll be thinking, do I want to go back to UFC and earn a, a fraction of the money that's on the table for boxing? I can't see him n pff, not boxing from now on in, Cole. I mean, what would you do? Well, all of a sudden now I've got a heavyweight who's, who's come from nowhere and you're thinking, well, he's just dropped and, and probably beaten Tyson Fury, not got the decision. And Tyson Fury is the number one heavyweight WBC, heavyweight lineal champion. Um and we all want to see the unification fight between him and Usyk. But now ngarno has gone in there, beat him up, dropped him, not got the decision. So now you've got Ngarno, who's in the mix, in the heavyweight mix. Would you chuck him in there with Anthony Joshua? Would Anthony Joshua fancy that fight? Eddie Hearn says it's an easy fight for AJ, three, four-round job. But he would say that. He then said he wants to see AJ Fury straight after. So it shows what his agenda is. It, it's, almost a, it's almost an act of desperation from Eddie Hearn. Let's get the fight on with Fury and AJ. No one's actually, people would want to see that, but that's not the big fight at the minute. But Ngannou belongs in the mix now with the heavyweight division. He's proven that he can probably, by that, that fight there, he can jump in there with Deontay Wilder, he can jump in there with AJ. Do you know what I mean? It'd be nice to see him in there with maybe some of the, the lower level British heavyweights, but after doing that to Fury, I feel like he deserves a shot at the world title against, against 
maybe one of the other champions. I mean, Usyk's the guy with the belts, and then obviously Tyson Fury got the WBC. Would you put Ngannou in there with Usyk based on that performance? Bloody hell! Who wins that fight? Ngannou Usyk based on the, based on that performance. It's it's a mad one. It's just mad that he's come from nowhere and he's just given Tyson Fury absolute hell there. But it was only a ten round fight. Tyson Fury probably didn't take it serious, but there's all these like factors you've got to take into consideration. It was a massive show in Saudi. It was a big money fight for Fury. He's getting a bit above his station and he's shouting and screaming about he's not bothered about legacy. He's only bothered about the money. He's earning the big money. And I do feel like he's taking his eye off the ball and he's not that interested in actually having a competitive boxing match anymore. So when you say he might not fight again, he just might not. But there's going to be that much at stake on the 23rd of December or if it rolls into January, who knows? The Fury Usyk fight is that big, and the Saudi money is that big. It just dominates. It just dominates everything. Was it good? Was it good or bad for boxing? Carl? Listen, I think that was probably good for boxing because it was Tyson Fury, and there's a massive crowd, and everyone was tuning and watching it. But the flip side to that is the caveat is it's bad for boxing because the decision. The decision was awful, and 99 percent of people giving feedback on social media are saying that was a blatant robbery, and boxing is now struggling because. You've got the YouTubers, you've got KSI against Tommy Fury. That was potentially a robbery. A lot of people saying KSI won that. I, I didn't think anyone deserved to win. It was both absolutely crap. I don't even know why I wasted myself. I don't know why I went out of my house that night to watch it. But I had to watch it so I could give, I could give some stick after. But what a night, shitty boxing that was. It's not even boxing. And then you've got, you've got Tyson Fury against Ngana who was making his debut. And it, it, Ngana has been robbed. He shouldn't even be in the fight and he's been robbed. So... What is the state of boxing? Where is it going? It's, it's disastrous. And do you think it's realistic now? Um, just back to the boxing and off, off the ramp. Do you think it's realistic that the 23rd of December now, for Usyk, Tyson Fury, is that going to happen? Really now? No. 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 It's not happening. Um, Usyk was probably the only the only fighter in the, in the crowd who wasn't paid to be there. He was just there to promote the, the next fight. He gets in the ring after... Uh, and he doesn't doesn't really set up on Tyson. Doesn't call him names. Doesn't call him greedy belly or anything like that. He just says, uh, "I'll see you December twenty third. Now I'm going to bed." And I was thinking, he knows that fight's not happening oh. December twenty. You think Usyk knows the fight? They didn't do it. Yeah. Usyk knows. Neither the, um, Ngannou or Fury didn't do a post fight press conference. Uh, I've been told, and usually. One hint would be that, okay, so the reason Fury didn't do a post-fight press conference is because he knows that then they're going to ask him about Usyk and they want to do a big gala announcement in London in a couple of weeks. But the truth, I think, is that Fury knows that fight ain't happening. He doesn't want to have to swerve that question in a post-fight press conference as well as he doesn't want to face the heat of how comes everyone online is saying you've just robbed uh, an MMA fighter in a in a boxing match so I, I don't think it's happening Carl and I'm not sure we as I say I think that might just be the last time we see Tyson Fury um, and there's no slight on that that's not that's not a dig at him he's had a fantastic magical career and maybe he's just earned enough done enough achieved enough where the desire is not there anymore and he thinks I don't need to roll the dice and prove it against Usyk because I think it'll hurt him much more mm getting beat by Usyk, then what it would be like to be sort of tarnished as not fighting Usyk when he should have. That's what's going to happen. There's always going to be someone. You know, he beats Usyk. There's going to be someone else who's going to have to fight. Yeah, you but the that. Usyk fight you should have happened at the top. before this Ngannou fight. That was the fight that should have should have been happening. Um, and then the Ngannou fight came in and I was saying it was a stroke of genius by Frank Warren because it... It builds the Usyk fight. You know, nobody's going to take the Ngannou fight seriously, but they're going to be watching it with one eye on Fury Usyk. And now you're saying Fury won't want to fight Usyk, and I kind of t- I tend to agree with that. Um, the money that's going to be on the table for that is going to be ludicrous. But I suppose, I don't know how it feels to have 150 million quid in the bank, um, but I suppose when you've got that kind of money in the bank and then you've just earned another 50 mil, because um, Tyson Fury's been very kind of, I don't know, he's... He's not been showing much class lately when he's mouthing off about how much money he's earned. He's, he's, he's shouting and screaming from the rooftops. How he's not bothered about legacy and he's earned so much money. Well, is he at the point where he doesn't need another 50 million quid? Maybe. Um, and like you said earlier, 
if he thinks he's going to go into the Usyk fight and get beat, does he want to finish on that low? Maybe not. But um, it remains to be seen. The next couple of weeks are going to be very interesting. Well, that's it for another episode of The Verdict. Let us know what you think in the comments. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe. And um, we'll see you next time.